Hello and welcome. My name's Chris from the academyofworship.org and I'm glad you're with me. In this video, we're going to be studying something I'm calling anchor chords. Now, it's not a term that I think people throw around very often, but I named them that because your hand doesn't really move when you're playing. You just saw in the intro how that works. Now, your hand basically stays in the same place on the neck on the guitar. The idea here is to give you one more tool for your musical tool bag. And in this case, it's something that you can go high when everyone else is going low. So if everyone's kind of playing in a lower register on the guitar or the bass or the keys, and you need to fill up some high-end information, this is something you could pull out if you need to do that. Now, keep in mind that what we're learning here is something that you can use if you don't already have a part defined. Now, a lot of modern worship music has guitar parts that are already defined for you. But in this case, I'm assuming that you're coming into a song that you need something to maybe fill up the space that doesn't have a part, or you just need something when the chorus gets big. Don't take this as the end-all be-all of guitar parts, but it's definitely a good thing to know. Today, we're in the key of G major. And we're going to be talking about where these chords are and how this pattern and this shape is something you can move around. So in the key of G, if we move down here to the guitar, you have what are called five chords. You may have heard them referred to as power chords. You have one in G anyway. You have one right here. And then the octave of that, if you don't know how to find an octave, you find your root note on like say the E string here. You go up two frets and down two strings. It makes kind of a pattern, like it's a, it jumps up two and two. And you have the octave. So you start here now. So if you have this one down here, rooted off the low E string. You move up to the octave here and the shape changes a little bit because you got this B string that messes with you. Um, and it starts right here on the fifth fret. Now I covered this shape quite a bit in a video I made forever ago, and it's still on the channel if you wanna go back and watch it, but it talks about a shape that you can play over almost everything. This is that shape, but today we're gonna to be taking it a little bit further with moving around a little bit. In the intro, I had a very simplistic chord progression. It's really similar to a lot of music you'll probably run into. It was the one chord, to the four chord, to the six chord, to the five chord. And that looks like this on the guitar. So for the one chord, which we know is G major, you start here in this position, for the four chord, you simply lift up your ring finger while barring this fret here. And then for the six chord, you actually go back to this shape where you put this finger down, but you can either continue to play this because uh, if you don't know this already, the one chord and the sixth chord are relative to each other. So if you're playing the sixth chord, the relative major is the one chord. If you're playing the one chord, the relative minor is the sixth chord. In the key of G major, the sixth chord is the E minor chord. And you can either play a G major chord over it, which would still technically work if the bass is going down to an E and you stay right here on this guy. But what I like to do is keep this shape where my pinky and ring finger are, and I reach up with my middle finger and I just hit this guy above it. And all you're really doing is playing three notes. So you're going from this shape to this shape. Because you're reaching up and grabbing this E on the seventh fret on the A string. So one chord, the four chord, you lift up your ring finger, because you're keeping this guy barred. And then the sixth chord, you can either stay here, or what I like to do is reach up and grab this guy. If you're strumming this one, you want to kind of use the meat of your fingers to, to mute the rest of the strings because you're really only playing three of them. It sounds something like this. All right, so that's the one chord, the four chord, and the six chord. So let's play the five chord, which is the D in G major. It looks like this. You're simply going from this you can either grab your ring finger and just bar across here and lift everything up. Or because I have a bad habit, I tend to just slide up. Because then you can add notes here on the B string if you want to. But the shape you want is this, just a bar across the D, the G, and the B strings right here on the seventh fret. Because that right there, if you notice, is just a D major chord but you're just grabbing the last part of it right here. So once again, in review, 
The one chord looks like this. Four chord looks like this. The sixth chord looks like this. And the five chord looks like this. Four. Now you can take those and play them like I did at the beginning. I played it two separate ways. I played it where I was just strumming it and having it just lay down kind of a wall of guitar, or you can pluck it and pick out individual notes in those chords and have it be a little bit more spaced out and sound a little more ambient if you wanna add delay and reverb and things like that. You can move this anywhere. So if you're in the key of A, you would simply move up here to A because here's your root on your E string, or open. And if you find the octave, go up two, go two strings up, and you base your five chord, that weird shape here where you go bop. That'd be A. And you just move the shape and you do the same shapes. You just go one, four, six, and then five. And that's why I call those anchor chords because you can move them wherever you want your hands anchored on the neck. I hope that helps. I hope that's something you can add to your toolbox. Go out there, turn your amp up, play some guitar, try out those chords over some music that you play. Maybe add it in the next rehearsal you have and see how it works over the music you're playing. It's a good way to get you acquainted with the neck. It's a good way to get you acquainted with chord progressions and how popular music is structured because you'll have to keep in mind while you're playing those chords, which chord you're on. So I hope you find that really, really helpful. So please give a like, subscribe if you haven't already. I've noticed we've got a lot of people coming here that aren't subscribed to the channel. I'd love to get your subscription. So if I've earned it, please hit that subscribe button. And I'd love you to head on over to academyofworship.org. I have a free gift over there that should help you out. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.